All right, folks, welcome to the next episode of Cal3 with Rifat Bari. Today, we're going to be checking out an artificial problem with polar integrals, and let's check it out in Calculus 3. So let's go ahead and head over to our blackboard and get started. So what is our problem? It is as follows. Find the volume under the paraboloid. Z is equal to x squared plus y squared and over, over the xy plane and inside, and inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared is equal to 2x. So let me go ahead and reread this, 2x. So the first thing you want to do is visualize what are you integrating. So we're going to visualize that right here over our blackboard. So first thing you want to do, draw the x, y, and z coordinate planes. So this is our x, here's our y, here's our z. So what are, we, what are we trying to visualize? We're trying to visualize a paraboloid. We're trying to visualize z is equal to x squared plus y squared. So what does that look like? That looks just like a parabola. Here's your parabola. But now, take this parabola, revolve it, revolve it around the z-axis, and what do you get? You're going to get a paraboloid, and this is what a paraboloid looks like. Now, the second thing we want to visualize is the cylinder, x squared plus y squared is equal to 2x. What does that look like? That looks like a circle. Why? x squared plus y squared, that's a circle, always. So, we're going to have a circle right here, but take this circle and extrude it because there's no z variable so extrude it and boom this is what we get you can imagine the cylinder keep going up so the volume the volume that we're left over with is something something like this so this is our volume okay and so we're trying to find this volume right here hopefully you can see that it's almost like a chopped off piece of a cylinder so now that we understand the volume we're trying to integrate, let's go ahead and talk about some math. Let's talk about the region we're integrating over. We're integrating over x squared plus y squared is equal to 2x. What does that look like? To figure that out, we're going to complete the square, take off 2x from both sides. And to complete the square, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And now, x squared minus 2x plus 1, well, what does this become? This just becomes x minus 1 whole squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And so what does that look like? If I come over here, that looks like a circle on the xy plane with a center of 1 and a radius of 1. And so now we can figure out what our bounds are. How do we figure out the bounds for our x and y coordinate? Well, because we have a circular region, we have to think about using polar coordinates. So I'm going to transform this equation into polar coordinates. Remember, polar coordinates goes from x and y to r and theta. How does it do that? Well, it uses the following transformations. x becomes r cosine theta, y becomes r sine theta, and x squared plus y squared, if you see that, it becomes r squared, okay? So now we know how to transform our stuff. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, move right over here. So what is this going to become? x squared plus y squared. That becomes r squared is equal to 2 times x becomes 2 times r cosine theta because x becomes r cosine theta. Divide by r on both sides and I'm left with r is equal to 2 cosine theta. That means our radius, our r variable, is going to go from what to what? Let me actually write this in red since it's so important. R is going to have limits of integration from 0 to 2 cosine theta. Now let's talk about our other variable. Talking of theta, let's talk about theta's limits of integration. What, are, what is that going to be? Well, starting from over here, if our angle starts from here, which is minus pi over 2, we want to traverse the entire area of this circle. If I want to traverse the entire area of this circle, I'm going to have to go all the way, all the way around, right? All the way around over here. And so what is this going to be? That, that angle over here is pi over 2. So my theta is going to 
go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, and the final thing we want to talk about when it comes to polar integration, now that we have the bounds of integration for both of our variables, I want to talk about what makes polar polar, right? How do you go from an area, how do you go from the area of some rectangle with side lengths dx and dy, right? What is the area of this rectangle? Well, it's just going to be dA, and dA will just be dx dy. But if you have some circular sector-like piece, what would be the area of this little sector-like region? Well, we're going to find that out right now. So let's do it. Let's say you have some kind of a, let me go ahead and draw this nicer. Let's say you have some kind of a sector-like piece. Okay, here's your sector-like piece. And this angle right here is some angle theta. And that's a bad looking theta. Let's, let's make my theta nice. There's our theta. And there's our radius r. Now, if I transcend a little bit more angle, what am I going to get? I'm going to get a little bit more theta. So this becomes d theta. But I'll have the same radius, right? But what if I go ahead and extend this a bit more? Well, this is going to become dr, right? A little bit more radius becomes dr, right? And so what is this area? What is this sector-like area over here? Well, this area is going to be, if I approximate, approximate it like a rectangle, it'll be base times height, dr times whatever this is. But what is that piece? That's just going to be r theta, r times d theta. So this is r this piece over here is going to be r d theta and so the area the area of my sector like region is going to be what well it's just going to be base times height right if i approximate this like a rectangle it'll be base r d theta times height dr or equivalently written as r d r d theta and boom that's where your area of the sector comes from and so now we're ready to evaluate the integral so let's go ahead and choose my yellow chalk. We have the double integral over the region f of x, y, dA over the region r. But now, since we're using polar coordinates, this is going to transform into not x and y, but r cosine theta and r sine theta. And instead of dA, I'll have r dr d theta. And I just showed you where that comes from, right? That comes from this little piece, it comes from this guy, but extending it a bit more and finding the area of this little sector-like piece. That's where r dr d theta comes from. A lot of kids forget r, so don't forget to include this r over here. So now we're going to go ahead and evaluate this. So let me go ahead and choose my biggest chalk, and let's go ahead and do this. We'll have double integral of f of r cosine theta or sine theta. What does that become well x squared plus y squared becomes what well it becomes r squared and what is the rest of it it's r dr d theta r dr d theta as r what are the limits of integration for r let's check our whiteboard the limits of integration for r are between 0 and 2 cosine theta so i'm going to write 0 to 2 cosine theta and the limits of integration for theta what's that going to be it's going to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Be careful, don't put from 0 to 2 pi. It's going to be from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, the rest is pretty easy. I'll leave it up to you, but let's go ahead and uh, make this a bit nicer. We'll have the double integral of r cubed dr d theta as r goes from 0 to 2 cosine theta and theta goes from minus pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And if you go ahead and plug this dude into your calculator, you'll get the final answer, which is 3 pi over 2. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this episode of Cal 3 with Refund Barry. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to continue supporting Barry Science Lab, head over to barrysciencelab.org or brilliant.org slash barrysciencelab for 20% off their premium offer. We'll check you out in the next episode. The ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding yeah. equal Excuse learning. Me. We believe anyone can learn can anything. That's why our motto is yeah. memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant.
Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.